Humans have always had a thing for creating huge structures that look almost impossible. Many years ago, it was structured like the pyramids. And moving to the 21st century, our attention shifted to skyscrapers, which gave birth to structures like the Empire State Building. But in 2003, Dubai had a crazy idea to create the tallest building in the world, and they called it Burj Khalifa. The Burj Khalifa is a magnificent building whose height and design show the world just how advanced technology has gone. It went through careful planning, innovative engineering, and the use of advanced materials. But it is still a mystery that despite all the sophisticated ideas behind the structure, it does not have a sewage system. Now you can't help but wonder, is Burj Khalifa really the marvel of engineering and imagination that pushed the boundaries of what's possible? Or is it just another structure that will fail in the near future? It all started with a plan to create a whole new world in the heart of the city to honor the former president of the United Arab Emirates, Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan. And after much deliberation and back and forth, they came up with the idea of building what the world had never seen before. A skyscraper towering above everything else like a king ruling his kingdom. Construction started on January 12, 2004 and ended up taking more time than they had originally anticipated. The exterior of the Burj Khalifa was finally finished on October 1, 2009, yet it was far from complete. To create a structure that would not only serve as a tribute to the former president, but also require a significant investment of billions of dollars, they embarked on a mission to gather the most skilled individuals for the task. Considering this, they invested a considerable amount of money in hiring the talented minds of Skidmore, Owings & Merrill, a renowned architectural firm based in Chicago. Adrian Smith, who was hired as the chief architect, must have felt like he was designing a tower to reach the clouds. And the structural engineer, Bill Baker, probably had dreams about bolts and beams. Now the plan wasn't just to build a tall tower. No, they had bigger plans in mind. The Burj Khalifa was meant to be the centerpiece of a massive development, a whole city within a city. It was a structure that accommodated 30,000 homes and nine hotels, including one called the Address Downtown Dubai, vast parkland spanning three hectares, and a breathtaking 12-hectare artificial lake called Burj Khalifa Lake. That period was revolutionary for Dubai, as the government of Dubai had a bright idea. They wanted to shift from an oil-based economy to a service and tourism-based one. They believed structures like the Burj Khalifa would put Dubai on the map and draw in those tourists and investors like a magnet. For the design, the architects took inspiration from Islamic architecture, and made the tower rise gracefully from the desert floor. That concept not only gave the Burj Khalifa a unique look, but also helped reduce vibration from winds, making it sturdy like a camel in a sandstorm. Once the entire project was completed, the structure weighed 4,000 tons. This significant weight increase was due to the necessity of sacrificing certain spaces just to achieve the desired height. In Burj Khalifa, most of the space is just for show as a significant portion is primarily designed for aesthetic purposes rather than practical use by its occupants. But that shouldn't be a problem since we live in a world where you must make sacrifices to survive. And to make sure no occupant of the Burj Khalifa complained about accessing their spots on time, they decided to go for something that is a record on its own. They made use of a total of 57 elevators and 8 escalators. And the double-deck elevators are the real rock stars zooming up and down at up to 10 meters per second. The construction of the Burj Khalifa was indeed an extraordinary achievement, as one can only imagine. Samsung C&T, a company hailing from South Korea, joined forces with B6, a Belgian company, and Arabtech, a company from the UAE, to make this massive dream a reality. All had a unique role to play. Burj Khalifa's structure was rife with groundbreaking ideas that, decades after, still sound crazy. With 163 floors, the Burj Khalifa stands as the tallest building in the world. They pumped concrete vertically, reaching a mind-boggling 2,722 feet, which is approximately 829.8 meters. It currently holds the record of the world's tallest concrete straw. Since the purpose was to shift from oil to tourism, they couldn't do that without creating a record-breaking nightclub. The nightclub is located on the 144th floor, which is recorded as the world's highest nightclub. At Burj Khalifa, eating delicious meals was obviously not going to be an issue. 
but they also wanted to make their restaurant record-breaking restaurant. The world's highest restaurant was formerly 1,148 feet, approximately 350 meters, located in the CN Tower. And Burj Khalifa broke that record by having its restaurant at 1,450 feet, which is 442 meters high on the 122nd floor. Dining there probably feels like floating on a cloud, and it sure beats any restaurant with a view. The Burj Khalifa was wrapped with sparkles. With over 142,000 square meters of glass panels and stainless steel fins, it's a dazzling sight, making the building a beacon of light and elegance. The primary structure of the Burj Khalifa was constructed using reinforced concrete. To complete the project, a staggering amount of resources were required, specifically, a total of 330,000 cubic meters of concrete and 55,000 tons of steel rebar were used. Can you believe it? It actually took a staggering 22 million man-hours to assemble all those pieces. We all must applaud that dedication. They also faced their fair share of challenges that needed to be overcome. To bear the immense weight of this massive structure, the foundation had to be exceptionally sturdy. They drilled a total of 192 piles into the ground. Each of these piles had a thickness of 1.5 meters and was buried at a depth of over 50 meters. And now they had the harsh weather to deal with. Some innovative methods were employed to combat the intense desert heat and keep the Burj Khalifa cool. The engineers carefully prepared unique blends of concrete, conducting thorough tests and making adjustments until they achieved the ideal composition. Their goal was to ensure the concrete could endure the immense pressure and scorching temperatures it would be subjected to. Working under that heat was a big challenge, even for professionals. What they decided to do was pour the concrete during the nighttime when the temperature was lower, and they even went a step further by adding ice to the mixture. They hadn't intended to invest such a large sum of money only for the building to collapse one morning. Safety was their top priority, and they considered it at every level. At regular intervals of 13 floors, designated refuge floors were equipped with air conditioning. In the event of an emergency or fire, people could seek refuge on that floor before safety comes to them. To handle the massive project, Turner took on the role of project manager, ensuring that all aspects of the project ran smoothly. Far East Aluminum from Hong Kong took charge of the exterior cladding. It was a work that needed human perfection, and despite its many risks, they were dedicated to putting all the fittings and styles like a pack of fashion designers at work. A project like this was not going to go down without protest, but sadly, the protest was not from the people living around, rather, it was from the workers. In March 2006, the Burj Khalifa construction site faced a turbulent time when around 2,500 workers decided they had had enough delayed buses at the end of their long shifts. Frustration turned to protest. Sadly, things got out of hand, triggering a riot. During the chaos, cars were damaged, offices were ransacked, and even construction equipment fell prey to the workers' anger. The scene was extremely chaotic. After all the problems, the Burj Khalifa stands as a milestone for Dubai's tourism project. Sadly, people laugh at their efforts that despite all the brilliant minds in engineering that were put in place, they forgot to create space for a sewage system and had to truck poo out every day. It is true that anytime you use the toilet in Burj Khalifa, someone will truck out your poo. With a building as grand as the Burj, there's no shortage of visitors and residents, which means there's no shortage of sewage either. On any given day, the Burj can produce a whopping 15 tons of sewage. That's a whole lot of waste for those trucks to handle. It makes no sense that someone would build a $1.5 billion skyscraper without thinking about a sewage system. But that story goes deep. When the Burj was completed, Dubai was facing the aftermath of the 2008 credit crunch, and money was tight. Connecting the Burj to the city's sewer system was deemed too costly, so they came up with a rather cheaper plan. Let the poo trucks handle it. Although you can imagine how those brave, or maybe unfortunate drivers, make their way to the Burj Khalifa and drive out with their trucks filled with people's poop. But, as they say, necessity is the mother of invention. And it will interest you to know that the Burj Khalifa is not alone in this situation. Other buildings in Dubai have faced similar challenges, making them resort to the trusty old poo trucks as well. However, the government is now making plans to redevelop the city's sewage system. 
but this is a problem that the building will have to deal with until 2025, when the new system is expected to be up and running. With all that has been said, we can all agree that despite its sewage issues, Burj Khalifa has succeeded in technological advancement. It does not only serve as a great achievement for the engineers who did the project, it is proof to the world that we can create something new only if we push the boundaries of what is possible. With the way we are fast growing, the Burj Khalifa will have competition from other structures in the future. But since 2009, it has been an iconic structure that stands in the heart of Dubai. Please like and subscribe to this channel. Also turn on notifications so that you may get notified when we upload other videos like this one.